within the Protestant tradition for hundreds of years now, really, scripture scholars have been trying to understand, you know, reading these texts that we hear every day, especially the gospel texts, and trying to discern from them what, quote, really happened. Right? What did Jesus really say? Where did he really go? What did he really do? And this is a, and using, using kind of scientific literary methods, a fair amount of progress was made in that effort. And within the Catholic tradition, we got a late start, but for the last 70 years or so, uh, that, ha that has been uh, a feature of Christian Catholic biblical scholarship. Right? Trying to understand, looking at the text scientifically, trying to understand you know, what happened, where did it happen, how did it happen, all that business. The bottom line now is after all these years and after all these centuries, that project has really not gotten very far, as it should be, because that's not the point. It's not the point of these texts. Right? Uh, Back when I was in preschool, there was a very popular series of uh, um, commentaries on the Bible, and, and I think there was like every book of the Bible this guy did, right? And he was very much in that mentality of, let's try to figure out what really happened, right? I mentioned all that other stuff to get to this point, so hope you're hanging in with me. So when you get to the part about this text from Luke, the question is, well, why did these morons not recognize Jesus? Right? Why didn't they recognize him? They've been traveling around with this guy, maybe for years. And he's walking right next to him. Why, does, why don't they recognize him? And this scripture scholar says, well, the place where we think Emmaus was is west of Jerusalem. So that means if it's evening and they're walking west, the sun was in their eyes. So if they only had had sunglasses, they'd have recognized who this guy was. Now that's, that was this guy's solution to the problem. He clearly missed the point, and this was very popular. This was a very popular commentary. And for a while there, you probably heard a fair amount of preaching about stuff like this. But it misses the point. The point of the story is not, hmm, why, are, why did these guys not recognize Jesus? Actually, that is the point of the story. But we're never going to, it, it has nothing to do with literally seeing. It's about seeing, not seeing. Right? It's about knowing, understanding. That's the point of this story. It doesn't matter where it happened. You know? In fact, we don't even know where Emmaus is. There's a, there's a number of categories. I'm sure in the Holy Land there's some wide spot in the road someplace that claims to be Emmaus. We really don't know where it is. In fact, you know, Luke tells us it's seven miles. But different manuscripts of the early tradition have different distances. So you figure it out if, you, if you're interested. I don't encourage you to do that, but... Why don't they recognize who Jesus was? Very simple. They have not come to faith yet. They don't believe who he is. Right? How do they describe, you know, so they think this, you know, this roving person wandering along with them, they don't know who he is. Are you the only one from Jerusalem who doesn't know what happened? Right? They killed this great prophet, a mighty prophet in deed and word. That's who they thought Jesus was. They thought he was a prophet, and indeed he is. But that's not all he is. That's not all he is. If we believe that, we'd be going to the mosque down there on Route 108. He's not just a prophet. He's the Christ. That's different. That's very different. 
that they haven't come to faith in that yet. They haven't come to faith that this guy who they've been walking with all, these, all this time is the Christ. And therefore, this guy explains to them, well, doesn't it say in here and there and Moses and the prophets and all this business that the, that the Christ would have to suffer and die? And they say, well, yeah. And they still don't get it. When do they get it? When they come to the table. This is, this is a powerful story. Look what happens. While he was with them at table, he took the bread, said the blessing. Gee, we've heard this before, haven't we? Broke it. Broke it. Snap. And then the penny dropped, as they say. Then it clicked. That's who this was. You're Jesus. You're the Christ. And what happens? He disappears. Just like for us. What do we have? The breaking of the bread. And unfortunately, sometimes, just because of the way liturgy happens, you don't hear that crack. That crack should send a shiver up your spine every time we have Mass together. Because everything that Jesus said and did is symbolized by that moment. And we, and we, you know, and we don't need to go through all the symbolism of the Eucharist any, again. Right? But in that event, we come into the presence of Jesus. So even though they couldn't see with their eyes any more Jesus, he was just as present as he ever was. That's the point of the story for us. It's in the breaking of the bread that we come into the presence of our Lord. What a powerful gift that is for us. Again, this is a text that was meant for people who had never heard of, never saw Jesus, never met him personally, never witnessed all these events. Right? They're not unlike us. But they came to faith. They came to faith. And faith is the road to salvation. So we're grateful for that gift, this gift of the Eucharist as this eternal memorial as we use, we use that word memorial, right? And it's not, not to be understood as, well, let's reenact. It's, we're not reenacting anything, right? We're remembering, we're remembering again, remembering, remembering again, being united again with the presence of our Lord. That's the point of what we do here. And it's that faith that will lead us to salvation.